a fantastic job talking about something that is dear to my heart in Nigeria, and it has to do with animals. Uh, you talk about scapegoats. Uh, Nigeria has migrated from skipping goats to skipping snakes and skipping monkeys. Uh, you probably heard last week that uh, monkeys stole 70 million naira from a senator, and snakes stole about uh, 35 million naira from a wardrobe in the office of a woman who was uh, saving it from uh, jam. You know, when I think about Nigeria, I want to just resign like every other person, you know, make some little money here and send home some, build myself a house in Nigeria. I just want to retire there because Nigeria is such a place that would kill you. Uh, because people kill for Nigeria, nobody wants to save for Nigeria. Nigeria is a place where there is religion, but no righteousness. Nigeria is a place where there are churches, but there's no Christianity. Uh, Nigeria is a place where there are mosques, but there is no God. That is the sad situation of our country, Nigeria. But some 30 years ago, uh, Pastor Chris, you know, 1989, I was admitted to the University of Lagos. And I could have just graduated like every other person with whatever classes available, find a job, and let the world be. But something called upon me in 1992, 93, that the country was going in a dark direction. And we stood up and fought the military. In those days, when we were fighting the military, Pastor Chris will tell you, they used to bribe student leaders with 505 car. And when one guy approached me and said, you know, if you can stop fighting Babangida, Babangida was, used to be known as Donatus. He would bribe the living hell of anybody. Uh, we will give you a 505 GT. It's the 505 that had air conditioning. And uh, I come from a very poor family. But I had the courage to ask the man that, how long can a 505 car last? He was looking at me. He said, well, maybe three years will change it for you. I said to him, Babangida will not be around for another three years, I promise you. So I won't take your car, and you can tell your Babangida that he'll be out of here in a few months. And that was what exactly happened. When I went home, uh, last year, and we were driving to my village in Ondo, I asked my brother, is there still a 505 car anymore around here? <laughs> no, they don't exist anymore. The only one we saw had broken down carrying a wedu, you know, and banana. <laughs> Somewhere in the bush, it has become a bush car. That is why you cannot afford to sell your soul for any looker, any materialistic things. The houses that used to be the biggest in Lagos when we were growing up no longer fit to be described as boys' quarters today, built by very young, you know, millionaires. But the sad part is that we don't have a country. And the pharaohs of Nigeria are the ones that are flourishing. We, the Israelis, have been caged and in bondage. And each time, we move towards freedom. And somebody is trying to part the Red Sea. Sometimes we ourselves say, no, we don't want freedom. Let us stay here. But the time has come, this is 2018, that Nigeria must be freed. Yes, Nigeria must be freed, finally, from the hands of the gerontocrats who have held the country down. Some of the guys that are ministers in Nigeria today, I knew them when I was in primary school in 1979. Aldo Ogbe, who is Minister of Agriculture, was a minister in 1979. And these guys will sit down there and stand there and tell you that the future is for you. Of course, they know that Nigeria's future has also been held in bondage. It is deferred future. It's a future that they tinker with, 
they toy with and they have destroyed and decimated there are over 50 million young Nigerians who have never had a job before Nigeria is the only country where young people will prefer to go to a war torn country, Libya to go and live instead of living in their country some of them were rescued to come back a few months ago we have heard that they have returned back because Nigeria is living hell for them not only Libya Nigerians are the only some of the few African countries uh, are compatriots who would prefer to die at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea than to stay in their own country and people say to us that Nigeria is caused I don't believe that Nigeria works for the people who are cursed. That is what is happening. The Nigerian nation is not cursed. It's the people that are handling Nigeria that are cursed. And like you said here today, that the people that killed Jesus Christ, you know the reason why Jesus Christ was, he never committed any crime. Jesus Christ was killed because he claimed to be, according to them, the son of God. And they say, how dare you tell us that you are the son of God. That was his only crime. And when it was time for his prosecution, and Pilate said, choose between, because he wanted to free him, choose between Jesus and this other thing. They said they want Barabbas. Give us, let's take him. He's going to the club with us tonight. You know, that man that claimed that he's the son of man, we are going to deal with him. Because why? They were expecting Jesus Christ to be born by the daughter of an aristocrat. And they want to put Jesus Christ in a limousine and decide who sees Jesus and who doesn't see him. Who sees salvation and who doesn't see salvation. That was why Jesus Christ was killed. But something is about to happen to the people who have put Nigeria in bondage. Like those people who said when Jesus was getting killed that the blood of Jesus should be on their head and those of their families. The cause, the destruction and the bondage in which they have put Nigeria is about to be on their head and those generations behind them who have benefited from the looting and the destruction of Nigeria that has happened. I am sure that there are so many of you here today who would love to live in Nigeria. If, in, if Nigeria was remotely like Ghana, I don't even want to compare it to the U.S. You would love to be there because I live here six months every year. I'm depressed out of weather. I don't like cold. I wish that I can be in a place that is where there's no hurricanes, you know, where you don't have to deal with all kinds of natural disasters, a place where there's no Donald Trump, you know. That's the kind of place I would have loved to be. I know some of you are Trump supporters here. Yeah. But honestly, you know, it's just to let you know how beautiful we could have a country. But some people have refused to let it be. And we are saying to them, in 2019 is the time that all of them will be put into shame and retirement. Yeah. And finally, that's Chris, I promise that uh, we can defeat them. And you know, their cockiness and arrogance is the reason why they'll be defeated. I have been telling them, governors, senators, House of Rep people, politicians, if I were you, you should know that hurricane is coming. This hurricane should work. And if you know a prison near your place, you better be donating to the prison because you might end up there. Those of you have been stealing the country blind. Those of you have made it impossible to construct Lagos Ibadan Road in 19 years just to finish it. A country that cannot maintain four toilets at its international airport in Lagos. You cannot use their toilets. Everybody that is involved, we have to spend some time in jail. That's where they belong. So I want to thank you. All we need, simple. Let the people at home have the faith that we can make this happen. Secondly, we need a diaspora bond to release the bondage. Thank you very much for having me.